Hello guys, welcome to EZTV Presents Tech View, another episode. And this episode, I'll show you guys one interesting thing. The interesting part is like um, in our another session, we discuss about um, physical server remote management. So physical server remote management means uh, like it depends on the vendor, it depends on the manufacturer. So if it is a Dell server, so, and if you want to configure Dell remote management, that means you have to configure remote. Um, and you have to configure iDRAC. And if it is a HP, then you have to configure ILO. And if it is uh, Cisco UCS, then it's called I IPAM, or uh, or if it is any other third-party vendor, also it's called IPAM, right? So that's what we know and we learn like, actually how to configure those uh, remote management. So now today we're gonna learn different things. Different things means if you have a 200 server, definitely you wanna configure iDRAC or ILO or IPM for 200 server, right? But the thing is, how are you gonna like monitor all of them? How are you gonna access all of them? You have to individually log in each and every one and you have to check what's going on inside, right? What's the physical servers uh, uh, equipment uh, like, um, how, like actually the health check. So how are you gonna check each and every server health every day? It's not possible to log in each and every server, right? So to managing all physical server from one console, so there is this different, different types of tools exist. Like for example, for Dell, Dell has open manage enterprise to manage all the Dell iDRAC through that um, application. So this is a central management from where you can see all the iDRAC, uh, all the remote management of the uh, your physical server, if it is all our Dell server. But if it is um, HPE ILO, in that case, HP has a different tool, which is called HPE One View. But in this, episode, I will discuss about uh, Dell Open Manage um, Enterprise. So let me share my screen and we can start from there. Okay. So first you need, first you need a software, right? First you need a software. So how or how, from where are you gonna get the software, right? So in here, if you can search like, um, Download Open Manage Enterprise OVF format. The reason I write it down here, OVF. You don't need to maybe write down the version. Maybe version can be changed based on the time. But you can say OVF format. So what is the OVF format? Or OVF or OBA format, whatever you want. It's just for VMware. This OVF format is for VMware ESXi. So the application is going to be come up with a bundle. So you can install it on a Windows box, then you can download the .exe file and or m or dot msi file, whatever it's for Windows and OVA file and also for Hyper V or like different different types of uh, uh, environment. You can have different different types of version. So you can search like this and then um, you wanna I think I open this one. So it, it it took me to here and you see here available formats. Release date, and um, also I'm looking for this one actually. It's on a GIF format, but it's an OVF file. OVF. So OVF or OVA, any file. If you get it, you can install the like you can install it, or you can deploy it as a VM, uh, which is called appliance. So this is the appliance. Basically, this is the appliance tools. So you can create a VM automatically. So I will show you how you're gonna do that, right? So we need to download this one. Plus you have more, like if you want to install this one on the KVM, this is another virtualization. If you want to install it on Hyper-V, then you do need to download this one. So different, different types of versions is here. So I downloaded this one and it's downloaded here. Um, my download folder, if I can show you download, uh, you can see here, Open Manage Enterprise OVA format. GIF file, right? It's it's a GIF, it's a GIF, GIF file. So if you found any GIF file, then you can unzip it. Right click on it. And if you have a seven GIF installed, you're gonna unzip it through seven GIF, or you can say through this is a Windows built-in extract all. So right click on it, you say extract all, it's gonna extract like this. So I just copied this one. See here? 
all those files. So how many files? It's a lot of files, right? It's the OVA format. But if it is OVA, in that case, it should be only one file. So anyway, whatever OVF or OVA, both of them are supported by uh, BMR. So I just need to copy this folder and I already copied to um, where? Uh, in one of my server here. Uh, this is one of my server. So I just copied everything to here. You see, open manage the same folder I copied here. So now we're going to install it. So how are you going to install it? You, you need to select any one of your host, available host, where you want to plug this machine as an OVF or OVA, whatever. So you just need to right click on it, any, any host, then you can see this here, deploy OVF template, just click here. Local files, then choose files. Then you're gonna see here, there is a uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, five, but you don't need all six, you just need OVF, BMDK. So select this. This four file and see all four files are selected and click next. And then you can have your own name or the defense on like your company standard. It's up to you. Anything you can have. Say for example, mine is ELS, right? I can say ELS uh, open manage enterprise ENT or something, whatever. It's up to you actually what should be the machine name. And then click next, and then select any one of the host is fine, or maybe you can select this one, or maybe this one. It's up to you, whatever the host you want. And click next. Take a little bit time. Wait, okay, all right. So, um, take provision, total, you're gonna take, 830 gigabyte of space. Thick provision. So what we're gonna do, thin provision. So let's see. click next. And then select the storage, whatever the storage you want. Just select the storage, select the storage, and select the storage, whatever the available space, the thin provision, and then click next. And then select the network, whatever the network you want. But I'm just showing you like this, next. And those are this. This is the whole thing. So you can just say finish. Then it's going to start installing, and it will take. It will take uh, maybe three to five minutes, not more than that. So I'm going to cancel this one because I already deployed one. I don't want to uh, like waste the time. So it, that's it. It's just the uh, finish and it's going to be installed automatically like this, like this here, here. So now. You're gonna see by default after after you instruction is done, it's gonna show you the completed uh, is completed like this, and then uh, it's gonna be a power off machine. It's gonna be a virtual machine. Go to the right right click and go edit settings, and from there you see here the memory sixty four is all are pre configured. I didn't do anything, but by default it's signed eight CPU, but the CPU socket configuration is not right because in my physical machine I have only two socket, not eight socket. But I have a multiple core. That's true. So I can what I can do, I can say four here and then two software. Now it's a right configuration. And also, you can have a CPU hot plug enable. And you can see here memory. What it has memory. 64 by default is already taken 64 memory, but all the time it's highly recommended to memory and CPU. Please enable memory hot plug. So that it, it means that on the fly, whenever the machine is running and you need more memory or more CPU, you can add on the fly. You don't need to power the machine. That's what it means. OK, and nothing else I need to change. OK, and now I can power on the machine. Right click on it, power, and power on. All right, so I select this one and click OK. OK, it's going to be open. I just open another window. It's opening. It will take a little bit of time to load. Okay. So I'm gonna hit the um
I'm going to pause the video for completing this uh, booting stuff and then I'll, I'll be back. All right, so it's installed. I just opened the uh, So I just power on the machine after the installation. So this is the machine. So I'm going to So, so I'm launching the console for the VM here. So the, after you install first time, you need to do some uh, settings or configuration, which is this. Uh, so you have to accept the agreement. So I'm using my keyboard and press the tab key. See, to the tab key, I'm able to select the accept and hit enter from your keyboard. And then US by default is selected US, select US, hit enter. And then through the arrow key, you see a new password or verify the new password, change that password. Okay. So uh, the new password is selected because it's uh, marked as a blue. So type your password. I'm typing my password. And then with the down arrow from your keyboard, go down and then type the same password again. Then down arrow, apply is selected, hit enter. And change the admin password, yes. All right. Display current appliance status. If you check this one, everything shows active. Okay, and go back. If you want to go back, or you can see it's closed, it's like right, so you can see it closed. Display current network configuration. So if you want to change the network, so you have to go to the set, you see, from the keyboard, down arrow, select the set network parameter, hit enter, and then it's gonna be select the network adapter, hit enter, and then you have to provide your password, the one we change. And then tab, and then continue selected, hit enter button from your keyboard. Now it take you to the, network configuration page. Okay, so from here you can see uh, IPv4 is enabled and IPv6 is enabled. So we are not using IPv6. Now I'm going to disable. How are we gonna disable it? So tab button from your keyboard, tab one time, two time, three time, four time. Just do the tab. Okay, so now enable IPv6. I'm going to hit a space bar from my keyboard. Space bar, so now it's disabled. And now I'm going back, tab, selected, the IP address, right? So I'm going to delete this arrow key. So uh, right, uh, right arrow key, then go all the way, right side, and then with the backspace, clean up, okay? So what should be the IP address? 192.168 or whatever the IP address you want, 10 dot, dot whatever, it's up to you what the IP address you want. In my case, I'm assigning one, 192.168.11.20. And also my, then another tab, my default gateway is 192.168.11.1. But in your case, if it is different, then go all the way, right? And the backspace, clean up, and then you say 192 or, or 10, whatever you, whatever your uh, default gateway, when I put up like this, right? So in my case, my default gateway is 192.168.11.1. So that's what mine, and this is my DNS server, and also I have another DNS server, I can change it. It's up to me, right? It's up to me, okay? Uh, uh, I can say uh, 192.168.1.1, um, dot, dot and also I have another uh, um, DNS server, which is n. Dot, 15.90.4. That's it. Then you have to hit tab, tab, tab button and apply. And then again, password. Okay, and then continue. And okay. So apply, uh, appliance configuration is tech. 
maybe the core to fully disable mv6 connectivity hit okay so now you just need to restart the your appliance now what i did on my dns server on my dns server make sure if i was to use that machine so i can access this machine through the ip address for example <clears throat> um for example here if i now type the ip address 192.168.11.20 right so if you type 20 you're going to get the interface So you'll be able to get it to like this. Open Manage Enterprise. So you can now log in admin and then your password and log in. That's it. So now you're logging to the IP address. But if you want to log in, so in here you have to do some other configuration and I will I take it. Okay, next. Managing from three appliance of uh, this appliance, or you will be able to new this appliance. Okay. So if you have a like existing appliance, which one you have already the three point zero X version. Then you should select this one because you need to migrate the other stuff to this new one, right? But now this is brand new, so it's up to you. If it is not brand new, like your environment already have um, uh, this appliance, like Open Manage Enterprise, then select this one. So in our case, this is a brand new, so we're gonna select this one and make sure end user license you have a, you accepted this one, you accept it, and then finish. This is loading. So now we are able to access through the IP address. But if you want to access through the name, like depends on you how it's gonna how you want it. So you can create a DNS entry, and we're gonna look at actually how you can create it. So we have already open manage as a host 128, and also we have a subnet reserve lookup zone. So reserve lookup zone is this. So that's why we have this pointer. But if you delete it, whatever you want, you can create it based on the name. So uh, we are going to delete it from the here. It was my old record, so I'm going to just remove it. How are you going to create it? So new host record on your DNS. So you can say whatever the name, ELS, we provide ELS, uh, open manage. ELS open manage and then the IP address dot sorry not one it's, it's eleven right eleven dot twenty that was and that's it done so it's in here open manage and also it's in here it's not showing here if you refresh it it's not so here so you have a DNS entry right now open manage the IP address you can use the name so which is https and you can say ELS open manage dot ELS up to you, right? You see, you're able to get it, right? Then some go across here. The same thing, same skin you're getting, right? Same thing you're getting, right? So this page is going to be load. It's not loading yet. All right, it's loaded. So we can now try to log in which is admin username by the default user and the password we already changed. All right, so let's log in. All right, it's loaded. Now, enterprise setup one, initial setup, initial settings, okay. Time configuration and proxy settings. So time, you can select the time zone based on your time zone. So I mean, um, I mean, Stone John. This Canada, this one, GMT minus five, Stone time. Yes, 
US and Canada, this one. And number 29, time. Uh, So if you have an NTP server, definitely you're going to use the NTP clock. So NTP server 2.168.1.1. So sorry, 1.2. Actually, I have an NTP server set up here. So I'm just using this one, apply. Yes. Applying the change, this can take a few minutes. So you have to wait again. So it's already completed. And if you have a proxy configuration, like in your organization, you can do the proxy, but I don't have it any. So that's why I'm just clicking finish. And then the first initial settings is done. Uh, now it's time to discover the device. Discover the device means, it, it means that like if you have a multiple physical server like Dell PowerEdge or Dell other server, Dell storage, whatever your storage, your any kind of Dell equipment, that means Dell storage or Dell server, Dell, Dell Rack server or Blade server. So all of them has remote management. So you can, you'll be able to manage remotely all server together from one interface, which is open managed. That's why we install it, right? So now, it's time to discover all of your devices, right? So this, uh, discover device. So now here is the way, like say for example, server, storage, network switch, you can add all here. So it's a, in our case, it's a server, right? So select server and it's iDRAC. So select iDRAC. So the good thing is you see here, non Dell server, HP ILO, if you have non Dell server, HPILO, you can also add from there, which is really good. So Dell iDRAC. Okay. Then the host name or range. So if you have a range, so for example, I have a server and I have a subnet range which is 192.168.2 to up to, I don't know which IP is belongs to my uh, iDRAC server, like the server's iDRAC IP, but all those IPs is in this range. Whenever you're gonna work for a company, definitely they will have a dedicated subnet for, just for all remote, all ILO or iDRAC or any kind of server management. So if you have multiple subnet, you can add more multiple subnet, so you can add here add more here like this. So you can search it together. So my 192.168. My whole range. I, so it's gonna be search if it is in belongs to this range. One dot. So my appliance IP, I submit is 11, but 11 means 192.168.11, but the the server, the iDirect I used is in uh, 192.160.1 subnet. So one dot up to 254, that's it. Now, if you, um, now you need to know actually, what is your remote login, your IDRAC username and password. If you use different, different username and different, different password for your uh, all, the, uh, all uh, devices, in that case, you have to add one by one. There is no alternative ways. So, but in common sense, like most of the organization, they have one password and one username for all the server remote management because they want to maintain a standard. So in that case, you, you'll have options to add all together. So like this. So enable, you can say this one also and finish. So 
So now it's looking, you see here? The discovery is running, running the discovery. Why is fell? Why is fell? I don't know. With the, uh, anyway, let's let's go uh device. So discovery device, discover device. If it is not happening like this, it should be happen like this. Okay. So now it individual, individually you can assign an IP address. I know which I direct server I have. It should be pick up automatically. So you see here it's uh, IP. In here you have options. You can go by the subnet or go, go by like this. So I can use like this also. 192.168 dot one dot zero slash twenty four. I know this is my seven, right? So load and finish. You can see the job. This one is running. But how much percentage is running? Let's go a job. Okay, 7% running. Let's see if maybe it can be resolved. So I just assign one subnet. And whatever the IDRAC on this subnet is going to be discovered here. It should be. There's 31% done. Sixty two percent. Ninety three percent is done, it's almost done, is very close. All right, so I got two server. You said two device. So if you go home, uh, this is one device I am able to log in. So if you go to the home, you see here two devices. Discovered. So if you have a multiple like 200, uh, 2000, it's going to be discovered like this. But you have to check, you have to check it with uh, like you have to set up discover and then through the discovery, you'll be able to do that discover. Or you can set device. So this is the device it shows, it's already discovered. And now anyone, if you want any time, you can power on, power off, everything you can do from here. From one console, you will be able to manage all of your uh, physical server. You don't need to log in individually each and every one. And also you can set it up, the alert. You see alert log policy. And also there's some other configuration. So configuration, compliance, um, VLANs, backup restore, you can migrate from the existing one, application settings, network, alert security, incoming alert. So there is a lot of stuff you can do from here and the plugins. So there is some plugins. So if you want, you can install all those plugins. Networks, you see as user. And also, so if you, now you just need to click each and every one whenever you need it. And also, if there will be any kind of issues, it's going to show, pop up on the screen if whenever you log in. And also, without logging to this, you, you'll be able to generate some alert. And also, that alert will send it to your um, email. Some alert is already configured, you see here. 
LR definitions for which LR is for what. So based on that, you can set it up. It's a lot of options you can set up. And also there's a me, but that's also great things. Like you can have multiple like for server, what kind of like based on the services, what kind of alert you want to generate, you can do that from here. And configure compliance, Autobug, template, farmer and driver compliance. So you can create a baseline, download the uh, driver and create a baseline. And based on that, you can check the compliance of your all the servers. So that's how you will be able to check. So it's pretty, pretty cool tools. If you go any one of the server individually, you see here, you wanna see all the information here of the server information. Hardware, what kind of hardware this server has. And if you go to the uh, server farmer driver, the current one. So, and um, overview, right? Uh, power control, inventory, warranty, service, everything you can look at from here. You see here, the console is also showing here. The launch console is going to open another tab. So this is how you're going to monitor your server. And that's all for today. And uh, thank you. Thanks for watching. If you're new in my channel, please subscribe my channel. And also if this video has helped you, so please don't forget to share. And please make some comments, which will encourage me to make more videos for you. Thank you. Thanks for watching.